If you give me six and a half minutes, I'll give you every single technique you need to weather anything in the Warhammer universe. Welcome to The Painting Coach. The first weathering technique I'm going to teach you is heavy corroded rust. So to get started, take some typhus corrosion and paint this all over the area where you want to get this really heavy rust effect. Take your time and just build it up. When that typhus corrosion is completely dry, take some riser rust and you want to dry brush this all over that typhus corrosion. And the paint will pick up on all those little particles within the typhus corrosion, giving you a really nice rust effect. If you want more corroded rust and then more of an orangey effect, then you can see on the right hand side that I'm adding a second dry brush layer to really bring out those areas where it's going to get maximum oxidation. Now you know how to do heavy rust, let's do some light rust. So to start off, we're taking some Doom Bowl Brown and we're really, really watering this down quite a lot. And in terms of the model, we're looking for all those cracks and recesses and areas that we think may have started to rust, but won't have gone quite as bad as that main bit we just did. To enhance this rust effect, take some scrag brown. Again, water it down quite a bit, and we're looking to paint this inside that Doom Bowl brown, making sure we get into all the nooks and crannies, and we can also create some light streaking with this as well. Next up, I'll show you how to do verdigris. We're going to do two types. We're going to do a light verdigris and a heavy verdigris. So to start the light verdigris, take some nylac oxide, pop it on your palette, and get a really good pointed brush. And we're going to just going to paint this very deliberately into areas around the pipe where we think that's going to collect. So if we've got any dents on the pipe or where we've got bands that hold the pipe, we're going to just paint along there. For the heavy verdigris, go back to nylac oxide and just paint this all over the area where you want this effect. Now take your time, you don't need to pull too much, and if it does, just take it out with a clean brush. So whilst you'll have the bolt, you'll just get the verdigris effect around it. And what you're looking for is areas that perhaps are sharper corners or facing upwards may get more weathering on them, so just target those. With rust and verdigris covered, let's have a little look at paint chipping. Now this is really simple and really straightforward. First thing you need to do is find a sponge from a blister or a kitchen sponge, anything is fine. Get some paint on it, in this case I'm using white because it's on a light background. Dab that off as though you're dry brushing and then you just want to apply this to model, tapping along those highest raised edges and as you come down towards the lower areas, start using less and less. Once that stage is finished, go back to your sponge and add a darker grey colour. I used to love charred and granite when they made it, but I think we're looking at Skaven Blight Dinge now. And do exactly the same thing, just at the highest raised points where you want to create that chipped paint effect. And just use it sparingly further down the model. To demonstrate this effect with a different colour, I'm using Squig Orange on this red door. And again, I'm just taking my time and tapping away, tapping away, just leaving a little bit of Squig Orange that gives the impression that that red paint is chipping and starting to wear. One of my absolute favourite weathering techniques and one of the simplest to do is adding dirt to the bottom of buildings. Simply take some typhus corrosion and apply it liberally along the bottom centimetre to two centimetres of a building, making sure it's quite jagged and uneven. Then wash your brush off, wipe it in a paper towel so it's just damp and then start to feather that typhus corrosion into the building and you can see it's really simple, you get a fantastic blend and it looks great when it dries. So that's dirt on a building, let's look at dirt on some cloth. Now you can absolutely use the typhus corrosion technique if you want. I just want to show you something different using Agrax Earthshade. All we're doing is we're stippling Agrax Earthshade along the bottom of the model. Now let this first coat dry. If you need to, wipe your brush off and blend it in a bit. And then you can see on the next side we're just adding another coat of Agrax Earthshade and we're slowly building up that texture as the model dries till we get the desired effect. Chipping Space Marine Armour is a little more refined than using the sponge technique, so we're going to revert to a brush for this. And what we're looking to do is take a lighter colour to the armour colour and just start to dab in some little chips and some scratches. I tend to go for a desaturated colour, so I'm using Squig Orange on red, for example, and Skarsnik Green on the green armour. Now to enhance those chips, what we're looking to do is add some grey within those little chips that we did, very much like we did using the sponge technique on the building. The only difference is when I'm looking at the red armour, I'm just using some flesh tone, like Kislev flesh, to enhance the chips. Because the armour is quite dark anyway, we don't want to lose the, the grey effect in there. Whether in black armour can also be a bit of a challenge because it's so dark. So the first thing we want to do is paint a really dark brown into some of those recesses just to warm it up a little bit and look like there's some dirt collecting. So I'm using Rhinox Hide. Next off, we want to chip that armour a little bit using one of the mid-tone highlights. So for this, I'm using a dark, dark grey, uh, something like Eshin Grey will work. And again, we just want to create the effect of scratches and little dots. If it's too bright for you, you can always go and glaze over it with the black again just to blend them in a little bit. One of the easiest ways to add definition and weather your models is using an oil wash. Now you've seen me do this before, but it's really simple. 
Just take a little bit of oil into a small metal dish, add some odorless white spirit or other thinners, mix it all up until you've got a really nice thin wash consistency. Once you've got that wash prepared, all you need to do is take a traditional round-headed brush, dip this in, load it up, and then touch it against the model. What you'll see is the capillary action of the oil wash will pull the wash into all those little recesses, all those little nooks and crannies, and create a really nice effect tinting the model, but also giving you really good definition. Now, if you make any mistakes, don't worry, just take a makeup sponge or a Q-tip and you can use this to clean away any excess. Otherwise, go wild, let it dry, and you'll have a great result. The last technique I'm going to show you is using weathering powders, and this is excellent for trying to blend your models into bases. Now I've put some kitchen paper down so I don't make a mess, and all you want to do is just take some weathering powder, you don't need much, and pop this around the area that you want to apply it to. Once you've done this, clean off your brush a little bit by wiping it on that kitchen paper, and start to blend in the weathering powder along the model and along the base, and you can see it's really easy, really effective, and you get a fantastic look in terms of how you blend your models to the base. And there you have it, every technique you need to know to weather any model in the Warhammer universe. I really hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, give it a like. If you want to see how I painted all the other models I've used, check this link here, otherwise I'll see you next time.